him. I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack a gob, it's time for the only news that matters. And in a recent interview with Allison Hageldorf, the Motley Crue drummer praised Vince Neil's distinctive voice, saying, being friends for that long and then being in a band with them, there's something special that Vince has that absolutely nobody else has, and that's his voice. Nobody sounds like Vince. That's a big deal to say because so many people sound and look like other people and inspire to be like other people. Uh, Vince is Vince. That This is a beautiful thing. I love him to death. Yeah. Uh, Nikki Six, you know, also said, I love Vince because he doesn't overthink things. He is our audience. When I talk to Vince about things, he won't overthink it. He'll just tell it as it is. I always appreciate, you know, that I can lean on him as a friend. He's been one of my best friends forever. And without that voice, I wouldn't be sitting here today. That voice changed my life. And I get to write lyrics for that guy. And every time I write, I hear his voice. This is, I felt like a privilege. Now, before I continue, I gotta say, when Karabi was in the band, I remember Nikki complaining that Vince didn't write lyrics, and he's happy that John's in the band to write lyrics with him. And then after John was in the band, uh, left the band, he's like, oh, I didn't like John because he didn't write lyrics. And this guy. Anyway, despite the admiration from his bandmates, Vince Neil has faced criticism from fans regarding his live performances. Many fans feel that his singing has declined, particularly when it comes to hitting high notes and maintaining consistency. Uh, this criticism was evident when Neil's solo concert in May 2021 ended abruptly, abruptly due to his voice giving out mid-song. Following a break, Neil announced new tour dates, but he continued to face scrutiny. After his performance at a 2021 show in Long Beach, fans expressed their disappointment. One fan remarked that he just kept getting worse, while another suggested, this is one time that I think lip syncing should be allowed in rock shows. Uh, Motley Crue is set to perform at Summerfest 2024 on June 21st and will have another show on June 23rd at the Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort. Additional performances are scheduled for July and August, giving fans more opportunities to see Van, Vince Neil butcher Motley Crue songs. And they're, they're coming down here. They actually uh, booked the Hollywood um, Casino, which, you know, uh, it's a smaller venue, but big bands played there, like the Rolling Stones played there, uh, Paul McCartney played there, The Who played there, Bruce Springsteen. But the tickets are outrageous. Because, you know, anywhere you sit in that venue is a good seat. So, um, I didn't get to go see those shows. I did go see The Who, thanks to my good buddy Charlie Hill, who hooked me up with a ticket. But man, I wasn't going to pay a grand to see Paul McCartney nosebleeds. It's the first time since 1990 I did not go to a Paul McCartney show in South Florida, with, or, or, you know, I, I even went to Orlando once to see Paul McCartney, and it was a drag because when he did play the casino, he played Junior's Farm, which is my favorite Paul McCartney solo song that I've never seen him play live, and he played it the, the one night I didn't go. But hey, it's not worth a thousand dollars to see him play that, and, and the same thing with this show. I mean, uh, to play that venue, it's going to be extremely expensive because these casinos pay these bands an insane amount of money so in order to get the money back they charge the tickets the same amount of money you know 
Now, I know Vince, Vince has always not been the greatest singer live. You know, if you listen to those early live recordings and that horrible live album, Entertainment or Death, oh my God, that was painful. I remember buying that CD because it has Shout of the Devil era stuff and Too Fast for Love. All right, cool. And I'm listening to that and I'm like, man, Vince, the thing is, back then he over sang stuff and he would do like, how, how, wow, yow. He would say these, pronounce these weird grunting noises after a line in a song. So, but man, I will not complain about Vince Neil in the studio, especially on Shout at the Devil and his solo album Exposed. I thought he was fucking amazing on both those albums. I love his voice on those albums, but that studio magic stuff, you know? But to me, Motley Crue, I will never, ever go see Motley Crue after they duped me with the Farewell Tour. I went to that. I saw Alice Cooper own Motley Crue badly, but Motley Crue on the Farewell Tour had the most outrageous stage show I've ever seen in my life. It put Kiss to shame. The amount of pyro and fire. I mean, I wasn't close to the stage. I was like on the left side of the arena, a little back. And I can feel the flames. I mean, as far as the show goes, they were amazing. But Vince sounded like ass. And Mick Mars did one of the most boring guitar solos I ever saw. You know, the, the stage show made up for it. I didn't like the roller coaster. I don't see what the big deal was with that. Him doing the roller coaster thing. Because he's playing techno stuff. I just, I don't know, man. To me, Tommy Lee's greatest drum solos that I've seen was Theater of Pain. That was amazing. And Shout of the Devil was badass, too. Uh, already on Girls, 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 he started incorporating noises and stuff. And I saw Dr. Feelgood when he flew over the audience, you know, with, you know, samples and stuff. I don't know. I like raw, no frills drum solos and... Tommy Lee is a monster drummer that it was so entertaining to watch him, you know, do a drum solo without any enhancements. And it's wild to me to think about all this negative press Motley Crue's been getting on the road using tapes. And yeah, there's actual footage of Vince Neil using tapes. And I'm like, couldn't they get a better tape? It was uh, a footage of him doing on with the show. I mean, I think because the, the, the verses were so bad that I'm thinking, all right, maybe the verses were live. But then when he did the chorus part, yeah, there was a zoom in on the video and you see him, you know, stop singing while his voice is still going on. I mean, Jesus Christ, with all this proof out there that Motley Crue is just duping the fans. It really is. You, you had him on Eddie Trunk last week. Nobody asked him, hey, what's up with the tapes? And I've said this before and I'll say it again. You know, if Molly Crew just came out and said we use tapes, where Nikki Six did say, oh yeah, we use tapes for backing vocals and stuff. He did admit that at least, but he won't admit all the rest. Like Mick Mars said, Nikki Six didn't play at all. His whole bass thing was, you know, just... Uh, you know, tapes, and there's also footage of Tommy Lee not hitting the, you know, there was a count in, a drum count into a song where he's not even on the drums, and you hear, then he jumps on the drums, and I mean, even the drums are, are tapes, you know, it's just insanity, man. I don't know, man. I don't know how anybody with all that proof would pay big money to go see Motley Crue now. It, it boggles my mind. But then again, we live in an age where people love fake. They don't care. They'll pay a lot of money to see bands go up there and play the tapes. Hey man, more power to you. That's why Motley Crue is still out there playing. With all the negative shit talked about them, they are still playing, you know, the venues. Yeah, they have downgraded now that they don't have Def Leppard in the stadium show. They're not playing stadiums. They're playing state fairs, which, by the way, state fairs pay an insane amount of money. 
You know, you can goof on Motley Crue. Oh, now they're playing State Fair. Yeah, it's true. I mean, they've gone downhill as far as the, the size of venues they play, but they're still getting paid an insane amount of money. So, yeah, it's wild. Uh, Tommy Lee's defending Vince Steele and saying how much he loves him, which I will say that's a good thing because I know there was a time Vince and Tommy just didn't get along. I mean, I think uh, Tommy Lee was on probation or something, and Vince Neal did something in the airport that can land Tommy back in jail. This was right before he was about to quit the band and do his rap stuff. But yeah, now he loves them, which is good. I, I like to see people make up. And But you know, Nikki Six, you know. Nikki Six one time said, with Motley Crue, Vince has this amazing, unique voice. Sometimes like Robert Plant, Perry Farrell, they have these interesting voices that are, they're not pitchy, they're just raw and just kind of on top, you know? And uh, I always love that about Vince's voice and I would, you know, I would write for Vince. Anyway, whatever, man. What do you all think? Is this funny? I mean, how can Tommy Lee defend what Vince Neal's doing on stage now? I mean, have you seen these videos where they, you know, they put these words on the screen while Vince is talk, uh, singing like Kickstart My Heart and their lines like, you know, Big Mac and, you know, uh, it's just, I don't know, man. All I know is that, hey, all you that, that want to go see Motley Crue play the tapes, enjoy yourself. I'm not telling anybody not to go. It's just not for me, man. Because I'm not a fan of the fake. How about you all? Let me know in the comments below what you feel about this whole thing. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And ring that little notification bell. Hey, and like the video because it's good for the YouTube algorithms. So stay frosty, listen to Black Sabbath, and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>